Hey, Brett Truck is here. All right. All right, now we can start having a real conversation instead of this bullshit Woo! that you and Lady are doing. <laughs> this little, yeah. This fucking little, oh, nonsense. Do do? Cut this. Little, little, blah, 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 blah. Bunch of idiots. Oh, that's what you guys, Brett was at a rave. Guys sound like. That's where he was. <laughs> uh, we weren't sure where you were, but now we realize. Yeah, I am. Red Light District. <laughs> now, Brett, this is, this is anything, not your goth podcast. He <laughs> <laughs> just finished it up. Give him a break. Let him switch the over. The goth cast. All hey, right. what's going on? This, this is hey, the goth cast with Brett Drew. Oh my god! All right, I would. It's my so rave cool. sunglasses. Brett, your <laughs> audio is super hot right now. Oh. Yeah, you're very hot. Mm-hmm. I actually just literally came from a rave type thing. I'm, I'm in Las Vegas. My brother. It's my last night here, and he was like, "I really want to do this, you know, um, rooftop of the Hustler Club uh, party, you know, break break of dawn sunrise party." And I was like, I just wish you told me, like, I really would have planned my week around it or my day around it. I was like, I got a podcast at 9 a.m. So, yeah, I'm coming. (laughs) (laughs) But the party started at 2 Oh my AM. god! Two a.m. and I no. that's I I, ju- I left the party to come here. That that is a true story. So wow. I am I'm I'm actually pretty good. I know I'm gonna fucking be wiped, crashed by eleven a.m. But right I now, am I'm, good. I'm laughing my ass off at your I'm pretty good because I've been exactly where you are, and it's like that <laughs> adrenaline is just like flooding your brain. And you're just like. I'm not that, you know, I'm feeling pretty good. I, I, think, this, I think everything's going to be all I'm right. Doing, I think I'm great, you know? I think we're going to be all right. I know. Uh, how is my audio now? It's great. <laughs> audio sounds great, actually, yeah. Yeah, you're and, like, uh, it's something, there's something weird about being like, hey, Brett, your audio is super hot, and then a really long story in between where I'm like, <laughs> I know, now it's just bothering me that my audio isn't right, and I'm like, I can't talk. Can I say something, please? Uh, so, wait, Rob, have you not slept at all? Well, you know, uh, since he told me about this yesterday, uh, I was like, fuck, okay, well, maybe I can. So he played poker for a few hours, and then I said, all right, I'm going to go. I also had to switch hotels. So I was like, I, I got to go grab my stuff from Harris, and I'm going to go check in at Paris. And then I guess I'm going to, like, nap from, like, 6.30 to 7.30. And then I had a call at 7.30. I did that until, like, 8.30. And then I said, I guess I'm going to sleep again from, like, 9 to, like, 12 30 and then i'm gonna wake up and shower and get out of here and that's basically what, what happened so like i slept for oh. 45 minutes i did like another two hours and then i got up and then actually he pushed it back he's like okay it's not gonna happen at two it's gonna happen at 2 30 and i was like great and i went right back to my room i slept for another 30 minutes you're wait hold up you're that good of a sleeper well you know i what? could <laughs> never sleep you said three different times that you True. fell asleep that's amazing you know yeah. what it, it yeah, actually is more of a testament to how how little sleep I've gotten this entire week, you know, that I'm like, I'm in, I'm in this state of exhaustion where I'm just like, if you give me the opportunity, I probably will just, just nod off. That's it's amazing. Not, it, mm-hmm. It's not it quality reminds sleep. Me. Yeah. A lot of uh, being on the road with Steve, like during the craziest tour times where you're like th- exactly that, uh, yeah. where Steve's like, OK, uh, uh, we're going. Actually, we're, we're leaving. We're not staying at this hotel. We're driving three hours um, after the show <laughs> to go to a different uh, hotel uh, yeah. because I have some other reason I have to be there. Uh, yeah. And then just you're just like, grabbing okay, sleep cool. anywhere well, you can. Cal- ten calculating minutes. like, oh, yeah. when do I? OK, now I have to shift my nap. to. It's like it's crazy. But when you're that exhausted, it, it just happens yeah the 10 minutes between ordering your food at a restaurant and getting it everyone's like all right sweet (laughs) (laughs) i'm like your own hypnotist (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna be so insufferable with my like youthful energy while everyone Mm -hmm. is exhausted on tour because i won't have been driving so i'm just gonna be there like (laughs) 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 no one's a lady about nap time (laughs) (laughs) lady is all juice and snack time oh yeah you know i actually did i did a tour did a theater tour right out of college i was like 19 going on 20 it was it was absurd and then uh and i was, I was... oh my god <laughs> sorry sorry <laughs> so sorry <laughs> absurd how oh the audacity it, it, um. it, it, <laughs> <laughs> uh and i was just like that like uh boring drives everybody's just nodding off and me i'm just like 
I'm looking out the window. I'm like, oh, what's that? <laughs> I'm like, why'd you go to sleep? I'm like, why don't you shut up? <laughs> because I'm living my life. That's why. <laughs> We're all living our dreams, guys. It's like one of the guys on tour was like 47. He's like, this is a shitty gig. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a good job. It's like, describe my future. <laughs> yeah, this is exactly. This is a non actor you piece of shit. What are you talking about? Yeah, this I'm is like, exactly. Well, we build our own sets, you asshole. I'm like, this is the best. <laughs> this is exactly me and Lydia in San Francisco and Sacramento, where she's like, there are outlets at this hotel. And I'm like, yeah, lady. <laughs> <laughs> if there aren't outlets at the hotel, it's a problem. <laughs> Did you see that they gave us soap? <laughs> oh my god! What Cut a mental breakfast. It's just like <laughs> I can make my own. I can make my own waffles. Exactly. Oh my god! Am I in <laughs> England? <laughs> Continental. Ooh. Uh, we're all over the country. Where are you, John Marco? I'm I'm in Houston at the moment. Excellent. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. What, what am I doing? It's a I'm uh, doing it's a uh, it's a bar called Rudyard's, uh, but it's the Riot. So it's headlining uh, Friday mm. and Saturday here. Oh, and then I, I, nice. I go to Austin tomorrow for three mm. days. That's really nice. great. What are you gonna do in Austin? Get some shows there. Yeah, some random bar shows, and then headlining the Creek in the Cave on Wednesday. Nice. Ah, so, is this your first time at the new Creek in the Cave in Texas? Yeah, this is my first time in the South. Uh, <laughs> oh. Oh. So. <laughs> Yeah, I was in I was in some there's a club called the Secret Group in Houston. I was on Friday and one comic kind of ran the light and when he got off stage, uh, him and another comic got into a, a physical fight in the green room. Uh, very intense. And uh Did you light and, him during the fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, there you go. Wrap it up, guys. <laughs> it was I, honestly. I mean, I want to. I want to. The guy who fought the guy for running the light. I want to bring him to New York. Introduce him to some of my comedian friends. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone I tell in Houston, they just go, Haha, "You got the Houston experience." And I'm like, "Oh wow, this is very different." Uh, That's we all run the like, light here. <laughs> <laughs> we know we're going. Fight. We noticed you're going to your show's bare knuckle. Uh, that's an interesting <laughs> choice. Yeah. <laughs> I like the idea of lighting him during the fight and just being like, ah, this guy always runs the fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm opening up for Sam. Oh, you sure you got the reach on him? I don't know. He's, he's 220. That's going to be a tough uh, guy to open for. <laughs> I do like the idea of uh, somebody's like, oh, he's running the light and they're putting brass knuckles on. <laughs> <laughs> just he's getting taped up. It's, okay. it's a theme show. That's why he's got a. He bat. holds his hands out for chain. you to tape him up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> bananas, man. Uh, Lord, yeah, just man. a little little advice, uh, John Marco. I don't know if you've experienced this yet, but bless your heart is not a nice thing. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've heard that. Okay, I've heard that. Cool. I've learned a couple things while I've been here. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't born yesterday. Well, <laughs> last night uh, I was drinking a. Um, Oh, what's it called? It's a Lone Star, and right, and like the an audience member, it was a little, the Late Show, and they were like, "How's the Lone Star?" And I was like, "It's good." <laughs> uh, and and the joke was, I guess, that it's like the shittiest beer in the world, mm, and I uh... I I enjoyed it. You know, I'll have a PBR, a Lone Star. And uh, they just like he asked three more times throughout the show. And finally, I was like, what is going on? Do you work for Lone Star? And like the whole audience, like they were in on like they had talked about it before the show. We're like, oh, yeah, it's the worst beer in the world, you dumbass. And uh, well, this is the and... worst state in the world. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Well, here's something I need to say to you guys, then it's your beer. <laughs> All right. The only reason I'm drinking this crap is because I'm in your state and I wanted to support you assholes. Make a better beer. How about that? Ding dong. They talked about it like I don't know if you've ever uh, had uh, Australian friends. Like if you talk to them about Fosters, right. like they're right. furious about it. they're they're angry about that whole ad campaign. Because mm -hmm. yeah. every American went to Australia and was like, Could I have a Fosters, please? That's Australian for beer. <laughs> In an English accent, that's what they do. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Chip, I don't, Chip, I don't Chip, have the accent. Fosters, my friend. <laughs> Hello. What's all this then, Fosters? <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, John Marco, I was happy to finally have you on the podcast. I, th- I caused a little consternation earlier because uh, we were trying to think of guests. We are a bunch of white guys. And so we were trying to uh, hold back on more straight white guys, right? <laughs> sure, and, and sure. I think you posted something. This is a long time ago. It may have been like a year ago now. You posted something like, hey, I'm doing a thing. And, you know, if anyone wants me on their podcast. And I was like, yeah, you should come on ours. And they were like, dude, we just said... <laughs> No straight white no, guy. What are you doing? Guy. And I was like, I don't yeah. know. I just got excited. I commented. Also, it was tagged us it was... in the comments. Oh, I did that too. I was excited. <laughs> sure. I was excited. So I'm actually really happy that I finally got to, to come to fruition on yeah, that. Now, now, now I have to be like either no to Gian Marco to his face. For no, <laughs> I have to now explain that we're not having straight white guys in a comment thread. But you could or... have said, you could have messaged me that because I think at the time, and I don't yeah. think this anymore. But because Rob was so enthusiastic about it and that never <laughs> happened, I assumed Brett that it was like, oh, Brett didn't want to have me on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then later oh. we did all these we did all these Zoom shows together and Brett, like you you said like, oh, great set or whatever. And I was like, yeah. oh, oh yeah. okay, maybe we're cool now. Maybe I proved I guess myself. Guess it was Brett that didn't want me on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, you know what? I didn't actually. I should have went that far. Like my my neurotic should have. I should have went one step further and went. You know what? I probably did like make John Marco thinks other things. So I should have said something. I'm sorry I didn't. And no, that really I was know the how it. Point. I know we how were, it goes. We were just like, from, oh, we got to do something else. Go ahead. From producing shows, I know how. Like I had a, a white producer, and you know the white guys were the ones who reached out. They were the ones who messaged like, "Hey, I'd love to do a spot on the show," and I'd be like, "Hey, we automatically have two white guys already on the show." So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been listen, them. Yeah. John Marco, I like you, but I'm mad that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked up. I don't know what else to say. And it's become a big issue. We're like, we wasted a white guy slot for this. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a big, it's a big deal. Yeah, how hard those are to come by. The military <laughs> rations. <laughs> John Marco, I am proud. I am glad that we gave you a proud. White guy I don't know if we should use that word proud <laughs> I am along proud. with white. <laughs> we I are think, a bunch of boys and we think, are proud. I think all lives deserve to be on this show. <laughs> uh, if right. you have a white supremacist, tag them in the comments. We'll put them on the show. <laughs> uh, yeah, because we because you're one of our white guy slots. Now we got to wait like five weeks before we can have Milo. On the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, boy. Uh, I know that some of us are in a rush today. I just wanted to get, uh, think, is it okay if we just get right into jokes? What do you, what do you boys get think? Get right into jokes. Sounds oh, good to me. Righty, that sounds great. Well, uh, Jean-Marc. Yeah, I'm just up. not on tour. I don't have any fun stories or anything. Like that. Yeah, no one's got any okay, stories. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> it's funny, yeah. You're on tour now, but uh, normally we're like, let's leave space for Jared to tell us about his sandwich the, the, <laughs> of the morning. No, I don't hear what you're, I'm sorry, Jared. I forgot, I forgot we chatted a little beforehand. But we're, I've we're, got a stab wound. I'm like, well, I guess we'll time. If it comes up naturally, I'll tell him about it. But I don't want to just interject with it. No, man. Yeah, All you right. are in Pittsburgh right now, right? That's right. That's right. I had two shows on the tour already. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you guys one quick thing and then we'll get to business. Know. I'm sorry. I, I, I forgot that we My talked cab about driver airport. was very chatty on the way from the airport to where I'm staying here in Pittsburgh at uh, the Martin House at uh, Steel City AF. And I get in the very chatty, get in the cab. Is it called like, the Martin House? You're the only person I've heard call it that. Oh, well, the Martin House I sort of like refer to as like where the 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 people who win and oh, get the, to stay the, the here. Wing, the wing. Yeah, of, exactly. The residents. Steel City. I got it. Um, so, yeah, I get in the cab, very chatty right away. I'm not into chatting with, you know, cab drivers. And so I try to shut it down. He's like, hey, so you ever been to Pittsburgh before? And I'm like, yeah, you know, a couple of times, a couple of times. And he goes, so uh, where are you flying in from? And I go, i from New York. He goes, you into crypto? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't know if it's because I'm from New York and he just thinks that New York is like crypto central. Like, ah, everybody in New York is doing crypto these days. Or if he was just, wait, oh, he's just like, I can't wait to talk to this guy about crypto. I don't care where uh, he's yeah, from. I, think, I don't know where, he, I can't, I I don't know what one. his answers are. <laughs> I've been to Pittsburgh before. I don't care. Where are you from? I don't care. <laughs> Are you into crypto? Do you do crypto? There was a trial run where he just went straight into that. And then he was like, I have to ask a few questions first before I can go. Are you into crypto? (laughs) Did you answer him? Was there a, was there a, I said, no, I don't do crypto. And then he crashed the car. (laughs) (laughs) Terrible. 
And he thought it's so mopey every time I had another question. I was like, oh, is that Permantes? And he's like, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get to the jokes. Our order. All right. What's our order for today? Our order this week is Jarrett, Brett, Jim, Marco, Rob. Great right. order. Jarrett, Brett, Jim, Marco, Rob. All right. So I'm excited about this joke. I actually thought of it when uh, because of Matt Jenkins, who was our last guest. He had a joke. Black guy. About- yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's right. Very Count great. it. You had to, you're like, well, his name's Matt Jenkins, so we need to clarify <laughs> that's not. Even though our guests have seen him. <laughs> the thing about the white guy slot is that we have to talk about other comics who aren't white the entire time. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. I hope you brought some bits about Matt Jenkins. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it reminds me of Nanette. Do you guys remember Nanette? <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, just wonderful. <laughs> All right, so here's the bit. Uh, sometimes, in, if I don't feel like writing out a text, I'll do like that voice to text translation, mm-hmm. which is funny because you never say the text in the tone that you mean it. I've never ha- heard someone use the tone they mean. It's always deadpan, like, I'll be there at 6 p.m., can't wait. I'm literally so excited. I'm losing my fucking mind. I'm hype as all hell, yo. And then they send that. It's even better when it's like a fight just to see someone walking down the street. Like, how can you say that? Nothing is more important to me than you and the kids. And if you try to take them away from me, I'll kill myself. I love that. It's almost like you have to hold the emotion till right after you make the punctuation. Can I see an example of that? Uh, so it's uh, if uh, what was the what was the last thing you said? Uh, if you take the kids, if you take the it? kids, I'll kill myself. Yeah. If you take the kids, if you take the kids, I'll kill myself. <laughs> 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 because you can't. Oh, the funny. reason is you can't have any emotion that might throw off the voice dictation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then exactly. afterwards you have to go exclamation point. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I forgot the. That That's the part. The punctuation. Yeah, you got oh, the punctuation yeah, yeah, yeah. there. And you can do five ex- five exclamation points. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Um, That's super funny. Rob. <laughs> Damn it, I was going to be my note and lady. Went. Oh, I'm sorry. And it's then right. there's going to be something. Sorry, there definitely the going to be. just trying to help you out, Rob. Just draw. Just draw the, just draw the shit. Draw your notes. We were going to come up Show with them at this. the end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm not a straight white No, I got a different one. I got a different one. I'm a professional comedian. Hold on. I got a little it. less of this. A <laughs> little less of this, lady. A little more of this. All right. <laughs> Uh, uh, what were you saying, Jim Marco? No, I'm just trying to think if there's also a typo thing, too. I mean, the problem with the speech to text, there's always some kind of typo. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, that's probably, I mean, that's why people have to talk so steadily because they're oh, also yeah. get a typo. Right. So, it'd be funny if it was like, how can you say that? Question mark. Nothing is more important to me than you and the kids. And if you try to take them away from me, I'll kill myself. Oh, shit. Kill. Kill. Kill myself. <laughs> yeah, Kill <exactly>. myself. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the exact same thing, but I, I was thinking maybe you could get caught up in something where you're like, you know, and if you take if you take away the kids, I will kill myself. No sugar. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Kill myself. There we go. <laughs> something along the if, if you just like are in line at Starbucks as well, and you just have one yeah, extra I love thing. That. I'll kill myself. Small. Oh no. Yeah. It's really good. Venti mochaccino, is that yeah. a thing still? Right, 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 exactly. Oh shit, I typed that. Uh, yeah, I would. This is like a good feel the audience out situation because I think I think certain audiences would kind of eat that up. I think they'd kind of enjoy that. Um, mm-hmm. And then your act out can just keep on. I like that. I feel like that's Don't universal work. enough. Like I'm listening to yeah. every time I have done it, and I'm listening to you know with, I'm on the road with Steve, and he'll do it as we're in the car together, and I'm like, it's always that tone, you know. Well, yeah, yeah, you got to do some sexting. I mean, if it builds a sexting oh, beat, I'm sure sexting too. Sexting is funny too. Oh, that's really good. I like the way that you're receiving all of these notes, Jarrett. You're like, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you feel like you're high. I oh. love it. It's so nice. Yeah, what? Oh my God, you guys are the best. <laughs> well, I am I am in that headspace because I was editing the high writing challenge right before this. Ah. And so here's something funny. So I, was, I, I wrote a, uh, another political sketch and I put it all down and I was like, oh, I think this is really funny. And Steve was there. So I was like, hey, Steve, uh, I want you to tell me what you think of the sketch. And it was on my computer, it was written on my computer. So all I did was I put my computer down next to Steve and I was like, here's a sketch. I'd love to get your feedback on this, right? But he didn't know that I was putting my computer down as if, as if to say, read this. He thought that I was putting my computer down and then I was gonna sit down and like walk him through it. <laughs> so I just put the computer down and then I leave. <laughs> 
And then like an hour later, I'm <laughs> editing, hour? I'm editing the high writing challenge and I'm watching me be a high idiot. And Steve comes over and is like, Hey, so where's the sketch you want to show me? And I was like, <laughs> didn't you read it already? Like when I put, wait, what? And I felt so high in that moment. And I was just like, I showed it. Wait, what? And I'm all, or what? Oh, so yeah. So I'm in that high space now. Guys. That's super funny. That's great. All right. Yeah. Anything else for this guy? I know it's kind of like, I don't know if there's a lot of meat on the bone, if there's anything else for us to get into. Uh, but uh, sexting was a... super funny. The typo was funny. Um, it's very relatable. Uh, yeah. I, I, my, for whatever reason, my voice dictation will, if I put a comma in, it'll put the word O before then. And it just makes me sound super dramatic all the time. Where I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, let, we'll go to the mall and, oh, we have to get jeans. <laughs> And I think when you say it, I think you can really uh, enunciate super, super big. Because I think when you do that thing, you suddenly talk like you are a British, like mm -hmm, you are doing mm -hmm, speech mm -hmm. dialect because yeah, you wanted get to get try. everything that you have. I'll be there at 6 p.m. Can't wait. I'm literally so excited, period. I'm losing my fucking mind. Exclamation point. That's funny. I like that. All right. Anything else for this, guys? I don't mind keeping it short today. I'm just trying to guess. think if there's a twist, if there's a, a way to, yeah. you know, because you have what would be the third strange way to go about it. Well, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. what, I, what I was thinking of was the opposite. Like, why are you doing it that way? Why are you flat? Because what that suggests then is that if you tried to put emotion behind what you're saying, that it will get it wrong. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't can't think of anything funny at the moment, but. Like, what is something that when you say with emotion, the phone clearly won't get right? I know that kind of starts to go into like, you know, uh, oh, autocorrect oh. territory. But what? Yeah, what are you gonna say? I have an maybe an idea is like, in a way, the phone forces you to uh, calm down. Where maybe you start at a place where you're coming in hot, and then as you, but now that I'm saying the words out loud i'm realizing that you had a point earlier <laughs> and i mean that's maybe that's really like funny. the phone does a really good job of like showing you that you're overreacting that's yeah. so funny you're coming right. you're like i don't understand what you're talking i don't understand what <sighs> i don't understand <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. you are being mean to me <laughs> or, or or it goes like i don't understand what you're i don't understand what you you made a good point. Yeah, yeah, you right. You should I change really it. Do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand. You don't understand. understand. I don't understand. I understand <laughs> that you're feeling hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, if it's That's all great. garbled and like maybe there's curses in there and you, just, you can't get it all out. You're just like, just fucking bad issue. you're like, maybe I overreacted. <laughs> That's really funny. It, it talks you Excellent down. Excellent notes, guys, here. We got all three beats now. Excellent. God, dad, damn. I feel, I feel so much love for you guys right now. You know? like, oh. Do you ever like look at your hands? Like really look at them? I love this. I think it's so good. You know, I, I, I have some comic friends and I'll run stuff, a joke by. And when it's just one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes we we're all in such different wavelengths with like what it is we're trying to say that I have some brilliant comic friends. I'll, I'll be like, Hey, I'm struggling with this punchline. And the ideas they send me back are some of the worst ideas I've ever seen in my life. And it's just such a strange, like, like they'll send me an idea. I'm like, no, that's not what's funny about. <laughs> yes, yes. Are you out of your fucking mind? This is terrible. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. I can't wait for your turn on... then. <laughs> I can't wait for you to get mad at us. For not no, doing but then I, then I just go, I just go, mm -hmm. oh. and this is nice yeah. because when they give you a specific idea back, part of you is like, I have to try it once in front of you. <laughs> and I know it's not going to work, but okay. You get off stage. Did you do the, did you do the thing where I told you to rape your grandma? You're like, I didn't get to it. It's weird. I think uh, it was Anthony a joke Jess about soy milk. So I didn't really feel like they, that fit. <laughs> it was, it was something like Anthony Jeselnik was opening for Chris Rock and Chris Rock gave him a suggestion. And he was like, ah, I have to, do it and it bombed and it bombed and it's like you know what are you gonna do it's like you Was really think i should use the n-word that many times <laughs> <laughs> the baby was dead <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay. All right. Thanks so much for your notes, everybody. Surely. And next up, we got Brett Drug. All right. All right. Uh, I'm going to actually do this a little bit more Jarrett style. Uh, I'm going to throw a bunch of jokes at you, and you guys Ooh, can tell me what, what hits with you and uh, what you like, any thoughts that you have, instead of my usual one-liner, and then you guys dissect it. Um, mm. Okay. So uh, I have a neurological condition called cluster headaches. Um, it's one of the worst pains known to medical science, but calling it cluster headaches makes it sound like a fun, sugary cereal. <laughs> have you tried honey bunches of cluster headaches? It's part of an imbalanced breakfast. Uh, before it was called cluster headaches, it was a little bit more aptly named suicide headaches because there would be a lot of lawsuits. People would have to pick a side that they would. Su- I'm just kidding. People would kill themselves. Um, <laughs> and uh, until until recently, there were no treatments, which is why people would give themselves the old skippity dippity. Um, cluster headaches are caused by a. <laughs> Sorry. No, I like that. I like that. Keep going. Uh, cluster headaches Good. are caused by a... It's weird because I'm normally just tell you guys a joke and then look at your faces, and now I'm just reading the whole thing, and I right, like, right, don't right. know what's happening. <laughs> it, um, it, the suicide took me a second, so that's why I spaced out. I was like, what is It is say? weird to call suicide like, the oh, old su- skippity-dippity. <laughs> 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 oh, that part, that part. The I got first you. part. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I caught up. Yeah, I still don't get that part. Uh, su- suicide... People would sue each other. Lawsuit. I'm just, kidding, but it's called suicide headaches because people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it took me forever. Uh, um, caught up now. <laughs> uh, the rave is starting to hit you, Rob. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh God! <laughs> Cluster headaches are caused by a malfunction in the hypothalamus, which is the biological clock of the brain. And sometimes people will be like, "My biological clock is ticking," and I'm like, "Mine is melting." Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, that's it. That's really good. All right. I love skippity dippity. I think that's super fun. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm alone in the in the wouldn't get the suicide to a side part of that. Um, and Rob, it took you a minute too, it right? T- it, it took me up until skippity dippity before I put together <laughs> <laughs> what the earlier joke was. And I said, what the hell does that mean? Because I, I feel like everybody politely laughed and I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, I missed something. I got it. <laughs> I missed it. So I, it, it took me a second, so I will point that out uh, as a note for sure. Sure. <clears throat> for some reason, is this... John Marco, first... did you get it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, it was during the uh, minute-long pause after Skippity Dippity that I finally started putting the pieces together. <laughs> I, th- I think it's definitely... I, part of me wants to know more about what a cluster headache feels like because mm-hmm. I I think there's just in my mind, I'm like, oh, so it's a headache or it's like a bad headache. And there's just something about like what it is. I want to know more about what it is that then I think su- is all the suicide stuff starts to make more sense to me when I hear like co- quite how bad it is. Yeah, yeah. my problem um, that I run into with that is that uh, I don't want to be giving myself a medal for how much pain I'm in. Um, and I don't want, if I paint the actual picture of, of what a cluster headache is and why it's called a suicide headache, it's not funny. Uh, it's, it's, it feels like somebody is putting a hot poker through your eye and twisting it for 15 minutes to three hours. That sounds very funny to me. I'm not, the wording was, (laughs) it's a funny visual. You got a poker in your eye now? I don't know. (laughs) You sure you don't want to say any of that on stage? I'll I'll be, Um, no, I, I kind of agree with John Mark right here in that. You know, you have like a go-to line, which is like, it's the worst pain known to medical history or something like that. But I, I don't know if that's really visceral, you know, that I feel it, you know, when we're, we're comics, you can, I like, I think it would be really fun for you to do what you just did and describe all the ways in which this is a really bad pain. Or you could even speak to that point. Like, I know, I know what headache sounds like. I know everybody here's had a headache. So I'm up here mm. looking like a pussy because I say, oh, headaches. I'm like, you know, th- I think you can yeah. dive into that for sure. If if for no other reason but to be able to get some of this stuff out because I really like it. I like I like you talking about it and talking about it more. I, I, if, if it's a personal preference of yours, be like, ah, I don't want to do that. I don't know. I'm, I'm maybe. Uh, I, I think don't want to should... play on people's sympathy at all. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. I don't know if it, it doesn't come off to me. Just so you know, like if you're talking about an ailment, it doesn't come off to me as like, oh, woe is me. It, it, it does come off 
as just this is just this is just true i'm just i i want you to know that and there are misconceptions about it sure but i just want you to know that that it's technically true uh, i don't know how you guys feel i don't think that i'd be sitting there like oh geez like in the audience personally mm-hmm. yeah i just think it's when you when you describe mm-hmm. a new medical thing i just like have so many i'm just so curious about it and like to set that it's like I need the stage to be set as to like what this this is or may, it doesn't have to be sympathy it's just what do you have to do when it happens like uh yeah I just it's just understand I ask my friends who get like you know intense migraines all the time like what happens like it's I'm so curious about what it is I because I have no I have no comparison mm-hmm. to me I'm like oh is it a bad headache then why are people suicidal mm-hmm. and I think right. like it's just well, it's setting up this because people would would kill themselves to escape the pain yeah, I think it's good. I think I would want to know that up front before the cluster, a honey bunches of clusters joke. I see. I, I, I think oh, I'd I want to know the severity because then it's like they used to be called suicide headaches because they were so bad that people would literally kill themselves. You know, do well, maybe episode. maybe the joke is that they stopped calling it because calling it suicide headaches. It gave people the idea in the first place. They're like, oh, you have a suicide headache. And they're like, oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like something about that suggests the solution. Now they just get a bowl of cereal. They're like, you know, should I go get cereal? <laughs> you got a cluster. Yeah, it's weird. They they updated up, up. it from suicide headache to cluster headache, like the medical community. And I do wonder why that is, and why there's no in between. Where I'm like, you've lost the severity but, of the headache. You've made it we- weird sounding, but um, you also there was probably a good reason that you stopped calling it suicide headaches. Or if you think about like, oh, I'm so sorry, you have jump in front of a train cancer, <laughs> like something. <laughs> <laughs> do I? Is that is that what I answered? To <laughs> what should I do? Uh, <laughs> I think I already told you. <laughs> That's really funny. What's the cure? <laughs> I think that there, because it's almost like you know, there there is no other disease where. You, the possible solution is in the name you know i don't want to say possible solution like suicide is a good idea or anything but <laughs> it's it's a little bit of a leap where some doctor says um the we, we it's you have you have a condition called suicide headaches and the guy's like oh uh why do they call it that it's like oh because unfortunately so many people they have it they end up killing themselves and unfortunately there's really nothing that we can do you know, except I mean what all the other people did, but don't, but don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. I feel like there's, it's not, it's not one-to-one for me. I think you need to have a little bit of connective tissue where you leave, give the doctor space to sort of like milk it a little bit where he's like, yeah, sorry, there's really nothing we can do about your suicide headaches. They're really, our hands are tied, you know, all these people, <laughs> they got suicide headaches and they really don't have anything to do. They really just got to suffer with their suicide headaches. Suicide. <laughs> I, like, I like the moniker of suicide uh, applying to other things where they're like, oh, yeah, I got a bad case of suicide acne. You're just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so we bad. did that the last time <laughs> Brett had a suicide joke bit. Yep. I think so. Yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, other suicide yeah. stuff. <laughs> uh, great notes. Thanks, guys. Uh, there was something else I was gonna do. I love skippity dippity. That's really funny. That was really true. Um, but yeah, that concept of it, uh, yeah, the idea coming your way and jump in front of a train cancer. That is really good. That's like great. That That's really funny. What was the part after skippity dippity? <laughs> uh, the cause of um, cluster headaches is a malfunction in the hypothalamus, oh, yes. which is your biological clock. So sometimes mm-hmm. I'll hear somebody say like, my biological clock is ticking. And I'm like, mine's melting. Yeah. I, you know, again, more, more real context for me is because like now you're trying to do metaphors on top of a concept that you're a little bit reticent to get into. And right. so it, it just might come at, I, 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 I was hoping just, explaining that people kill themselves to escape the pain would be enough uh which i kind of skirted over and you guys were still trying to do the math on on that joke Um, no 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 you're right you're right but for some reason uh, and uh, you know it still is like even just the tiniest bit of hand holding to be like it's a bad headache here's how bad the pain is and then the next leap is like that's they call them pseudo headaches because people rather kill themselves just that one little bit of extra information would be like oh yeah yeah Headache, I get it. 
worse headache than I could ever imagine. Got it. And then and then from there on in. Uh Again, I will just put out there that I don't the think thing, the audience is going to be like, oh, that poor that poor guy. You yeah, the, th the thing with me describing how painful it is, it, it feels like the only way that I can do it because pain is relative, you know? Yeah. Uh, mm. So I can only compare it honestly to the pain that I've had. I've dislocated my shoulder. I've had a Liz Frank fracture, which is a really bad fracture uh, where you, the hardest bone in your body, one of the hardest bones in your body bends and cracks. Um, and uh, I've, I felt pretty significant pain and it is nothing compared to those cluster headaches. So yeah. what I want to do is, is if I'm going to accurately describe it is that women who have had it have described it as worse than childbirth. Um, and people who have been shot have described it as worse than a gunshot. Well, oh, well, it's very funny. If it's very funny, you telling a woman it's worse than childbirth. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, that, which yeah. is like why I don't want to do it. <laughs> uh, I think that's super uh, funny. So to do. Funny, you got to You got to do it. That's so yeah. And you're you're acknowledging that like how yeah. bad it sounds, um, yeah. I think that's great. It, it reminds me not it's a different avenue. I I just think about um that great bit that uh I do. Uh, what he does about breaking <laughs> his fever. What uh, uh what's his Brian Regan does a bit about on a scale from one to ten what's yeah, the yeah. pain mm -hmm. and he's like mm -hmm. eight. He's like he didn't know what number to say. But I think it is funny, especially with comparisons. There's something really funny there about. Yeah about uh it's more painful than childbirth especially if a man said it yeah like that like, or he came up with that fact and you're like oh i don't know <laughs> I, I think it'd be funny if a woman told you that and you're like thank you for that but i can't ever repeat that like like i'm glad <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, glad yeah you said that even if it was like a female yeah. doctor like this is a really bad pain it's worse than childbirth They're like thank you lady doctor i'm uh, that I can't use that. <laughs> like, I can't yeah, yeah. Is there is there any other any other any example <laughs> I could use? <laughs> Kick me in the nuts, something like that. It, I like that a lot. Yeah. Would you mind traveling around with me and telling people that just so I don't sound like <laughs> I'm like mansplaining no. <laughs> my pain? <laughs> yeah, I think it's tough, especially with headaches, where like that. It must be challenging when the pain is not visible. You know, childbirth and injury. Like people are like, oh, that must hurt. But in a head, it's hard to be like, no, this is worse than, than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you going, <laughs> you going into a hospital, someone giving birth, you're like, get her off the table. This man's in much more pain. <laughs> <laughs> it's even worse because at the end of childbirth, you get a kid. Like, there's no product <laughs> of your cluster <laughs> headaches. You know. The phrase we use the phrase it's all in your head to dismiss things normally. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's all that's in your right. head. <laughs> oh, that's good. What do you think uh, about um? about sorry give me one uh, moment oh oh yeah he's sorry. going through an episode right now actually that's the yeah, reason why he's got the glasses yeah. on he seems and, to be and, taking and... it pretty well for worse than childbirth <laughs> give me a moment <laughs> i think he's gonna we should check on him because i don't think he's coming well back. oh my god is he skippity dipping <laughs> <I think> he... <laughs> <laughs> oh we didn't the... see the signs the signs <laughs> The one thing, and Brett's got a longer bit about this, but the thing that actually helps it is hallucinogenic mushrooms. So he is tripping right now to deal with his headaches, to deal with cluster yeah. headaches. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that bit I have all worked out about the mushrooms yeah, yeah. and stuff. Uh, yeah. uh, I was just letting Joe Marco thank, know. Thank you for, I don't know if you guys can see how sweaty I'm getting all of a sudden, but <laughs> you are getting sweaty. <laughs> I was like, God, these are good notes, but I can't pay attention to them. <laughs> we thought, we, we, Lee thought you were going to go skippity-dippity on us. And we got nervous. <laughs> uh, these are all such great, great notes. Uh, so sorry if I'm I'm like all fidgety and sweaty. It's totally. Fine. I did have an idea if you wanted to expand the section where you, where you talk about how painful it is with all these ideas people are talking about, it could be a potentially funny way to do some crowd work. So if you were saying like, has anybody here had something like really painful happen, childbirth, gunshot, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then they tell you what happens. And then you say, okay, now imagine that, but, and then you add to it to let them know like- that's But you what have a headache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gave birth to uh, quintuplets, okay. Imagine that only five, uh, four of the five kids you gave birth to were chainsaws. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, yeah, but then it then it, it does feel like a a pain. My pain is the worst, like a one upman's mm -hmm. thing, which I really want to mm -hmm. avoid yeah. because okay, it, it is one of the worst pains known to medical science. Which is why I'm being kind of reductive about it. Mm -hmm. Is because I don't like I'll win. 
I don't, I don't want to, I, I don't sure. want to get into that. <laughs> but I think that's, I think that's what's very funny is the struggle. Yeah. I mean, the thing even yeah. that you're saying, but it's like the struggle to, to describe pain. It's like describing red, or you yeah. know, like right. it's if there's something about describing pain that is so fucking impossible, and the different. I mean, I think it could be a whole different chunk of just yeah. like how do people describe pain? How did they do it back in the day? You do numbers, you do comparisons, you do it's here, suicide. come here, let me show you. Right. I, it's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I also do love that. I, I, I and. Yeah, there's only there's the only way that you can describe it is based on other things that have happened to you. So that that's that's cool. I like that. I like the fact that once somebody does commit suicide, they go, well, I guess the pain must have been pretty bad. I mean, he's <laughs> <laughs> like, that's that. the only time when they finally were like, oh, like, that's the oh. thing. Most people, most people delivering don't kill themselves <laughs> uh, do, do, do you want an epidural no just give me the shotgun right now <laughs> that's how you know that's uh, how you know yeah I, I i like that a lot um because it I, I, for me uh, personally it was like my when i told people what was happening like my 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 dad etc none of them really understood what right, right. how much pain it was in until they saw me have an attack and then they were like oh holy shit uh, and that is the, without a doubt, the worst part is, is that having like the pain is obviously the worst part, but the only thing that can make it worse is having somebody there watching, like feeling like mm -hmm. the empathy towards them, not knowing what to do and that they can't help. And that is, that's just like, so I usually try to be alone. Um, uh, but I, I do, but that, that speaks to me a lot, Rob is just like, oh, I guess it was pretty bad is that's like, so that's so on point. <laughs> mm. once, once they're just a lump on once they're dead on the ground yeah yeah <laughs> i don't know how this fits in but one of the things that i think is also interesting is the fact that painkillers don't work that yes. there's you know you could take vicodin you could take morphine and it's like the the only thing that works is mushrooms and uh and an oxygen tank but yeah, uh, yeah. health insurance won't approve that so. I also like the idea of, you know, everyone's just like, but isn't it just a headache and just so confused for so long? And then finally they walk in and you're just like swinging from a rope. You leave a note and they're just like, but isn't it just a headache? <laughs> <laughs> they say to your is swinging it, feet. <laughs> <laughs> is it a really bad headache? I don't understand. Like I've had headaches. <laughs> just like still just rocking back and forth. What, what if, he was um, so sad about? <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's what I was right about to say. I was like, so far, it was like, we call them suicide headaches because everybody who has them, coincidentally, also very depressed. And like, <laughs> the connection. There might be a connection there. Yeah, I do. I do like harping on the or, reductiveness of the word headache. And uh, that, yeah. Like you or were people complain, on, like people who get them complain about it so much, all their loved ones kill themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow, 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 we get it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anything else for Brett, everybody? Uh, I'm all good. That was a good uh, that's one. great stuff. Thanks, guys. All right. Next up, we got John Marco. But before we get to that, just want to remind everybody to check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash ITA pod. We just recorded a new high riding challenge with yours truly. And boy, oh boy, was it a silly, fun bit of business. You got to get on that Patreon. You can join for as little as a dollar a month, and you can see me be a high idiot and also lots of other things, of course. All right. Or you could just see me be a high idiot for a free right right now. <laughs> I'm so oh. hot. I'm cold. <laughs> Brett takes props. mushrooms for his uh, suicide mm. headaches. I get high because, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you should pay for. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, we got John Marco. All right. So this is a chunk. I've had it for a long time. And it's just this week in the middle. But it feels like it could be. So let me, let me just say the whole thing. That's the easiest way to go about it. Uh, right. So it's, it changed a little after last night. I can't believe I'm still working on this fucking joke. Uh, I, I've, I've, I'm dating this woman. I've been dating her pretty intensely. Are you drinking a Lone Star? <laughs> <laughs> Son of a gun. Sorry. I, had, I just figured I'd just, just get it in the beginning and then you could hear it. Oh, the my God. <laughs> You've been working oh on this God. joke for so long. You're not dating her anymore or you're married now. <laughs> Um, so, so I've been dating this woman for a, about a year and a half, pretty intensely. So I'm not quite ready to call her my girlfriend. And we <laughs> fight a lot about that until one night I took her to my favorite Italian restaurant, this place called Savarro. And we were sitting there <laughs> and all of a sudden this, this, uh, this French guy, I assume he was a tourist we were in Times Square. This French guy walked over to us and was like, excuse me, 
are you two boyfriend, girlfriend? Because you would have the most beautiful babies in the entire world. Au revoir. And he turned into a baguette and rolled away. <laughs> and then she turned to me and was like, so what the hell are we? And I was like, au revoir. And I turned into a matzo ball and I slept the other way. But now I'm terrified every time I take her on a date that this French motherfucker is going to pas de bourre on up and be like, excuse moi, wouldn't it be cheaper to live together? Au revoir. <laughs> Every time I go to tie my shoe, I'll hear him in the breeze like, ha, 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 au revoir. Uh, uh, we'll be making love and I'll see him in the window like, I poked a hole in the condom. Au revoir. <laughs> so uh, other than any notes overall, the, the, the second beat has always been my weakest point. And what I used to do for a long time is uh, we'll be at dinner and when we're not looking at her drink, a wedding ring will pop from the table like, ha, ha, ha. Au revoir. This idea of him dropping it in the drink or she'll drink her <laughs> champagne and choke on a wedding ring and I'll hear him in the breeze. So I, 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 I'm i open to any notes on the overall structure, but especially the beats in between. The last one, like the reason I've held onto this bit forever is like the last one always pops. I poked a hole in the condom. It, it, it feels very much, I feel very much at a phase. I do have this girlfriend now. The, there's a lot of stuff about like not being sure how to commit. I have divorced parents, this pressure to advance a relationship. So I really want to, yeah, I, it's, it's an important bit for me to figure out. Right. Uh, so my first thought is that I wonder if the, a small change, like not making it that this French guy is always trying to get you to commit to your girlfriend, but that he just runs around trying to get boyfriends to commit in general. So I he see. doesn't just pop up to you, but he just like pops up to other people, you know, like putting engagement rings in, in desserts and, uh, you know, poking holes in condom, et cetera. I don't know if that will, if that, if that solves anything or if it just creates another problem, but that's just one thought I had. Yeah, I like this idea. I mean, it's, it's like this idea of, uh, you know, it's like a horror movie. It's, it's like trying, it's romance, it's commitment. It's this concept of, of the moment suddenly something happens where you have to advance or bail. Um, so yeah. Uh, what would have happened if you guys were brother or sister? Sure. Sure. <laughs> Uh, I, I I would have said I, I don't know what the rules are in France, but here that is generally <laughs> frowned upon. Don't you wish you could at least warn you with an on guard? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, I was gonna I was gonna make some point about that. Like, uh, although the the au revoir, like like that is a nice you know thing that keeps on happening. But I was wondering if there's other just French phrases that he would just keep on popping in with. Uh, so there would always be something French. Traditionally, classically French. Oh, yeah. I, there was something about that 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 made me smile. And then also, I like that this guy's become he's he's like a super villain. You know, he, he's like he he's a villain to your to your cinematic universe where he just keeps popping in, and you're like, oh my god, you know, it's 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 these dastardly deeds that he keeps on pulling off. Uh, it it feels like where he just he just kind of pops in at different times of you in your relationship. Um, and uh, yeah, it's like I, I don't know. I can't thwart him. I can't beat him. You know, it's like uh, it's like Fight Club. He's always one step ahead of me every time I, yeah. you know, uh, am at a place. Yeah, he's always gonna pop in. Do you think a tattoo would work as one of the beats? Like he is giving, he is tattooing her name on my arm in a in a big heart. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. he's convincing her to to get have us get couples tattoos or something like that. Don't um, remind me. Sorry. For First beat is he shows up and he's like, you make beautiful kids. Second beat is... is no, so the first beat, that's that's the setup uh, uh, of who he is. And then the three beats of now I'm scared. Uh, every time I take her on a date, he'll... Uh, excuse, excuse me, wouldn't it be cheaper to live together? Au revoir. And that, that was... I feel like that's a fine first beat. Uh, but I'm open to everything. The idea ultimately was like, can I progress living together? Uh, uh, married, something, right. Right. and then babies. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was, so, like, I remember way back in the day, it was something about that first beat of, like, oh, uh, excuse me, you dropped a copy of his keys. Au revoir. Like, something 
but then wouldn't it be cheaper was the yeah. one I settled on for now. But I'm open to anything. I, I like wouldn't wouldn't it be cheaper to live together? I think that that's mm-hmm, a great. Mm-hmm. But great where, where what was the context in which he said that? Because it seemed like it just was like in a void. Yeah, it was it was a, a vague date. It was next time I take her on a date, he'll walk on up. But it could yeah. be I, I'm happy to set this like the third one is so easy to set the stage for. We're making love, and that's we're there. Yeah. The other two are more complicated. That's why with with the the idea of a wedding ring in her glass, it felt so complicated to set it up. You know, right. we're drinking champagne, and when we're not looking at the glass, a wedding ring. It's it, suddenly I'm you know s- stuck on the words. Yeah, yeah. Well, like like Maybe if, you, if restaurant, he was your you're like oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, if he was your Uber driver, and like you two were going from your apartment to her apartment. And then he turns around and that, you know, that, that gives him ample time to be like, wouldn't it be cheaper if you live together? You know, and you're like, ah, oh, damn it, <laughs> my Uber driver. So like if he could pop up in the scenario where it would make sense to be like, why are you going uh, to all the way to Harlem and then back to Brooklyn and then back to, it just, you know, God damn it. Maybe, maybe I, with that, maybe I paint it as not like the same French guy, but it's like French people, French people. in general. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're at a restaurant, you're like, oh, oh, let me go ask the maitre d'. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-huh. 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 Yeah. You're just you think French people just do that now. You know? Like, oh, we like oh, I've always wanted to go to Paris. You're like, oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, they're like Passports, uh, please. Ooh, when is a wedding? <laughs> <laughs> do you think I mean it might be a simple fix to go from putting the, the engagement ring in the champagne to just putting it in dessert when you go out to dinner? You know, this guy just was like always putting engagement rings in desserts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why I was playing with the I was trying to think of all the different ways that that could come up, whether it be the wedding ring. That's just the one that came to my mind. People putting it in a champagne glass. I, you know, there's flash mobs. I was just trying to think like what would incite would make people think the idea of, of someone proposing or like, like, you know, if someone gets on one knee and then someone shouts, he's proposing. Like, so I was trying to think of all the different ways that happens. Yeah. Every time you uh, go down to tie your shoes, he pops up and goes, Oh, oh it is the moment. <laughs> yeah. You know what I did recently? I tried this version at Stam New York. Uh, the idea of when I went down to tie my shoe, like a wedding ring hit me in the head. And I, I tried it with the mic. And I hit myself in the head with the mic and I hurt myself so fucking bad. I, I, it was like, it was bleeding a little bit. I had a huge bruise. Was it your first time hitting yourself with a mic? Uh, I think I do sometimes on the top of the head, you know, uh, but like first the, time right here in the temple. Time you went so hard. You're like, you went it's so much harder than it looks. Because <laughs> you want that sound. You want that sound. Oh, God. oh no, uh, I've, got a, I've got a suicide mic to the head. Uh-huh. <laughs> have you, ever, and, have you guys uh, ever tried humping a stool? Don't do that either. <laughs> it honestly, it was, it was worse than delivering a baby. It was the most painful <laughs> thing in my whole life. I could uh, with complete certainty that it was worse than delivering a baby. <laughs> oh, it's kind um, of funny to to confuse the pain of having a baby with delivering a baby. Like the doctor <laughs> is the doctor. one that's in pain. <laughs> like, yeah. My doctor told me that it's worse than childbirth, and he had been there. He had delivered a lot of babies, so I trusted him. Because <laughs> he's a man. There's something I, I, I wonder. I wonder if there's like, you know, bringing in the ring is too much. Like the third beat, he literally did something. Like he yeah. poked holes in the condom. And maybe I, I save him actually doing something with for the a last rapier. and True. the second. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, the second is, again, another like something he says or some scenario he sets up. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very, it's been tough. The yeah. Tough, yeah. I think I, um, I don't know if this is, you guys felt this, but I felt like I, maybe it's just comedy brain, but I felt like I, I know where it's going. So the surprise of him, I think really helps. Like if you're like, Oh, I think it's just, you know, I'm just going to talk to the major D or something like that, where, where he, you, you, you think things are fine. Then that adds a little bit more of a layer of, of surprise for me. Um, I think, yeah. and also I think I like Rob's note of you being more afraid of French people just because yeah, yeah. I have, I have trouble believing that you think that this guy is really going to show up. Uh, unless you yeah. showed up twice already. 
mm-hmm. uh, yes. in your life. Then, then I, it, it gives it, that give more credence to to why you're afraid he's going to show up a third time. Yeah, the the, re- the reality of like it it was so unnerving and shocking to you in that moment that you just have this like ptsd and every time you hear a french accent now you just like i keep on thinking i'm gonna get relationship advice or 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 not advice but rather like pushed in a direction i don't want to be in so it you know uh so now i always got to be on guard uh in case <laughs> <Air's> a, <laughs> yeah 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 in case there's a french guy hanging around i like uh, that i can't even this go is a little to... silly but uh i oh, do so sounds silly. a little bit like i do <laughs> Uh huh. Uh huh. I do. I do. <laughs> yeah, I love. I love French words and phrases. I love anything that you can just, pu- you know, put in there. Uh, that that that's Would French. You really like home scary. fries or French fries? Home fries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's just one of those like every time I do the bit, uh, when it goes well, it's every audience members will be like au revoir at the end. So it's like it's clearly like there's something in there. Yeah. that people like really get hooked on mm. um and i need some new merch mm-hmm. so <laughs> i also uh, wouldn't uh, engagement this... baguettes <laughs> <laughs> you could sell berets that'd be kind of funny oh <laughs> uh, maybe he goes up to your girlfriend and it's like you have the most beautiful hands but this one finger is naked <laughs> Uh, you run into like a French mime, and he like pantomimes uh, d- proposing. And you're like, God damn you, <laughs> son of a. <laughs> also, and this is gonna sound, um, you know, just like give up, just give up on the middle part of it. But I have uh, a couple of jokes where I thought I needed the three examples for the comedy threes. Yeah, and at yeah. one point I was just like, I'm just gonna do two because the two work, and then just go on with my life. You know, and so I know what you mean. I got I got another bit. I got another bit exactly like that, where like the middle one has been driving me fucking nuts. Yeah, just you and, too. Yeah. That's very interesting. But um, yeah, you're you're hooked because you have that huge pop at the end, right? And so you're like, now I have freedom to find what that middle one is gonna be. Cause I know I have the huge pop at the end. It's like that, it's so much permission for you to play with that second one until you sure. find something that's gonna go along the way. Mm-hmm. But sometimes if it is this random French person, it could be, I mean, it, 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 it random French people, it introduces more things I can play with. So it doesn't feel as predictable. Like, you know, the, the idea of that shoe, rather if I go to tie my shoe and I hear a French person, I'm like, we gotta get out of here. Like there's just something about whenever I see a French, moving moving so mm-hmm. yeah yeah i get that very helpful nice, um sweet. it's amazing i spent years it's just amazing sometimes how long yeah some right. of these chunks take mm-hmm. oh yeah it's a great mm-hmm. bit. can you it can you tell so us fun. some of the worst um suggestions you've gotten from other comics on that joke uh for this one it's it's just very oh, various I, I didn't think you'd actually, you'd actually have it. No, okay. no go ahead please i'd love to hear it no <laughs> no it's it's just just various ideas of how to propose about a flash mob i mean they're all trying uh, we're all trying yeah. but they're all trying <laughs> that's one guy should respond to them. i don't understand what that one <laughs> i mean he that's bad through the list of our suggestions he's like oh here's some of the worst ones <laughs> I mean, there have been plenty of times where I've pitched a joke and then somebody's given me feedback that isn't the answer, but they spawn an idea. Uh, sure. That, that, that sure. is the answer. Yep. Yeah. No, it's, it's hard to do because, like, you know, and, and this was the, the, the fun and the challenge of wanting to do uh, a podcast like this, where, as you kind of pointed out, John Marker, it's like you, there are funny comics who don't like know how to do this particular thing or just don't care to yeah. or don't have that skill or like they're like i can write for me but they they then they start giving you ideas that kind of might work for them or this is what i think is funny about it and you're like okay but i that's not what i think is funny about it and i'm trying to go can you get into my head a little bit and it's, it's a tough ask uh so any anytime that we hit on something it's 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 really uh remarkable it's really fun so yeah we give you cool something. well thanks yeah. guys <laughs> Cool. And last up, we got Rob Ryan. Uh, All right. Uh, here's a little bit I came up with the other day. Um, there is a there's a joke aspect to it. There's a logic aspect to it. I don't know which one works. If I have to do both, whatever. Just let me know. Uh, whenever people post on social media, 12 years sober today. I always wonder why the night before they don't post 12 years ago today, worst night of my life. <laughs> passed out in a pool, my own piss and blood. 
uh, <laughs> and then I, I was, and then if people aren't like with me, I wanted to go into the explanation of like exactly why that has to be true. Because like, if you, if you've been counting for 12 years, you obviously had a problem. And if you know the exact day you quit, the day before was clearly rock bottom for you. <laughs> So that's like, I'm just so much more curious about the day before, like I'm clean and sober. I'm like, what did you do? Like, what did you get into the previous 24 hours? I really, that's what I want to know. And I'm not sure if I should pin it, if, if I should sell it as like worst as I did or, or I'm interested. Like that must've been a wild night, a crazy night, you know? So I don't know. I don't really love romanticizing it, but I, but I'm either, either would work for me. Anyway, that's where I'm at. Uh, Matt Jacobs uh, is a joke. I love it. A joke that is uh, basically like when people show you how uh, like before and after pictures of them being healthy versus uh -huh. not healthy. Uh, it's like a little bit weird that they're showing you when they were unhealthy. Like, can you imagine somebody who's like, yeah, I'm sober. Want to see a picture of me with my needle in my arm? <laughs> see how far I've come? Um, well, you know, it'll be funny with, with, with that one is like the before picture. They're probably smiling even more like the before. <laughs> <they're>... <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I, I guess you could use like a before and after, like people do that with, with, uh, weight loss. So why can't I see the before and after on, on, you know, sobriety? Oh, wait, it's a, what, what is Matt Jenkins' joke? It's just about the fact. It would be the inverse thing. of that. Basically <clears throat> his, his is like, people show you the fact their that, weight loss picks, but they don't show uh, you the drug thing, but they don't show you the drug thing uh, or, or okay. like, or like, why do people show you their, their weight loss? Pick? Why, why do they show you before when they were unhealthy? So I'm saying in, you're you're kind of on the opposite end of that, where yeah. you're like, I deserve to see the before and after. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I I, I love it because I just I we see I see so many sober posts, and at a certain point, once you hit ten, it's like, okay, we're just gonna count now, and we're gonna celebrate each time. Like, <laughs> give me a little bit more to go off of. Like, how bad was it? <laughs> um, that's a good point each with each progressive year i'm like this must have been pretty bad <laughs> like <laughs> after one year like everyone can celebrate a year you know you could have just been mildly drinking and it's like oh that's cool you quit for a year that's good for you but if you're like you're 17 like what happened to that dude yeah for him to still be in for it to be it. like a 9 11 basically like that he never forgets like he's, right. it's, it's that perfect. meaningful to him yeah that's mm -hmm. 18 years sober and every day i have to remember that me being sober will not bring her back. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I was going to think too, like, because they're like, this was the day and it was that, like, I know that it wasn't a normal drinking night. It wasn't just like, hey guys, you know, thinking about going sober tomorrow. So cheers, you know, it's going to be a good, <sighs> yeah, all right, uh, that's, it, that's it. I'm quitting. I'm done. That's it. <laughs> yeah. It could be funny if you look at the calendar and it's like the day before was St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> like, you, or you like trace it to the holiday. That's, that's you trace it to the like, oh my God, that was your cousin's bar mitzvah. That must have been a wild fucking night. Oh, that's good. Or it's like you realize that the day before is the day that your cousin died in that hit and run. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> to the day. <laughs> He never caught the guy, did he? Oh, hey, 12 years sober today. 12, 12 years? Where did you live? Yeah, there was something funny about that. Like, you know, if there's any cold cases out there, maybe detectives should go on Facebook and start looking up all these, uh, <laughs> these sober announcements. Like, he's been sober for 20. Ooh. He's been sober for that. Like, uh, oh, go thumbing through the files. <laughs> all the, all the bad That's stuff. really funny. <laughs> That's oh, really so funny. I'm bringing the detective there. A much yeah. less dark version would be if you realize that their child is that much old minus nine months. Yeah, that's true too. Uh, that's, I like that. Yeah, I just keep on thinking about dark things that had happened during the, uh, you know, happy, uh, happy rock bottom anniversary, you know? Um, that would be, I mean, it would be funny if it's the post, if it was positive, where it's like someone celebrating the anniversary of like the best night of my life. And then the next day is the also 17 year anniversary. Like, <laughs> like they're also like, they're celebrating the greatest night they ever had. And then mm -hmm. the night they had to stop. Or what if it's somebody else's greatest night that they ever had? Like the, whoever you hooked up with that was yeah, yeah. so wrong to you that you got sober, but for them, they're just kind of like, but that, 
Because if it's, it's a reminder like, for them every time you celebrate, if it's the greatest night, I think what's funny is like you could have like a rock bottom night, and the first night was amazing, and the second night was terrible. Mm -hmm. So it's just like this was the greatest day of my life, and this was the day I realized it's time to put my life together. Like yeah. it's just that that is fun, right? Some every too. year before their sober anniversary, they say happy anniversary to the night I puked in a cop car. <laughs> I could tell Jim, John Marco's never uh, gotten through an addiction problem uh, because he's like, you have the greatest night. And then you're just like, yep, uh, time to sober up. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, like I'm saying like you could have like if you went on a bender, like the first night you could have been having fun. And the second is where things went to fucking shit. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Uh, I'm not oh, saying like, I, oh, the I whole... see. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm I was saying like, that's like, not how like, it works. You have the greatest like, night, you like, just keep going. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, I yeah. See. No, like part of the whole thing is like it was the greatest night of my life, followed by the worst morning of my entire existence. I see. Mm -hmm. And so it's I like see. you celebrate one, and then the next one is the one where you realize. But mm -hmm. you are correct. I am a very I'm a clean little boy. <laughs> <laughs> What would be a funny store to drive your car into? Hmm. <clears throat> Halloween one, adventure. one with people in it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Young, innocent people. Women and children. <laughs> the young, innocent people store. That's when I crashed my car. The young, innocent people store. Uh, Claire's? Claire's. It's a baby that you also went through the mall for a while first. <laughs> It's yeah, like deep, deep in the food court. <laughs> yeah, <wait. laughs> you side swipe the Spencer's gift. The, the, the Starbucks inside a Target. <laughs> <laughs> Happy anniversary to the day that I almost drove the entire way through the mall. <laughs> <laughs> when I destroyed the Pizza Hut half of the Taco Bell Pizza Hut. <laughs> Returned it to its original form. <laughs> the Taco Bell was unscathed. It's unbelievable. Somehow he missed all the Taco Bell. He's Taco really Bell against... Pizza Huts are an abomination, and I'm going to take care of them. <laughs> you know, okay. So, so when I do see those posted, I do think about what they think about. Like they have to have that story, the rock bottom story, in mind. You know, so like I know it's a celebration, but. It must be a sad one ish because like whenever people say that i'm always like I'm, i it, it comes from it stems from a genuine curiosity when they go 15 years sober today i'm like i was like so how how light switch of a moment was that you know were you did you wake up in a hospital room did you did you just wake up like you can't believe what you've done or how you feel like something was significant so that's the reality where it comes from for me and i'm just being you know jokey around it but this is great. Thank you guys mm -hmm. for. Yeah, but I, I guess to sum up what my earlier note was, it was saying you're only showing me the after. Yeah, yeah, right. right. And I want to know the before. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I, uh, Billy Princell, oh, he has a great joke about he's sober. And it's something about like you hear all these stories about the, the, the not sober version and they sound a lot more fun. Like you just like, like it's, it's kind of the person you always hear about but never get to meet. And uh, it's, you know, just it's just the dichotomy of just like it's it's a time that had to be, you know, obviously you go sober for a reason. There were problems, but there's also like something about that time also sounds like you were living life to the fullest compared yeah. to your boring, dull life now. Right. right. Um, do you think it would be funny to to do a bit about a, uh, an addict workshopping their their rock bottom? You know, like the first time they're like, oh, boy, I I ran my car into a into a fire hydrant. And people are like, oh, that's not too bad. And he's like, yeah, that's called the moth. <laughs> so he, pretty starts, short. he starts drinking again. And then he yeah. well, something worse happens. Then finally he could be like, all right, I drove into this a Claire's. <laughs> yeah, these like false summits but at, at rock bottom. Like I thought I hit rock bottom. I wasn't even close. Especially comparing. Yeah, some people might be like, they're rock bottom. You know, it's like, oh, I, I missed work that day. It's like, <laughs> I knew I had a problem. <laughs> and someone's like, I killed my boss. <laughs> but is your rock bottom worse than childbirth? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel bad about this separate issue. Um, you get the day chip and then you get the year chip. And then whatever, and then you drink or you do your drugs, and then you like 
do you have to like relinquish the chips? Do you do you get them back? As a do banker. You still, do you still have them? This is an AA banker. Do you, <laughs> <laughs> do you still have them? You're just like, I guess I'll put this one in a different pile. And you're sort of like giving them back to yourself. Hey, can you trade in five one year chips <laughs> for a five year chip? Make it yeah. seem like you're doing better. <laughs> right. I feel like it's kind of like yeah. Like if you have two four year, you're like you're like the Grover Cleveland of sobriety. Uh, if I can use that, is that a good uh, some? He's the only, uh, that's uh, gonna kill with the history buff. Yeah, well, the only non-consecutive <laughs> <It's>, um, two-termer. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have a punchline with Lyndon B. Johnson uh, uh, about the presidential fitness test, <laughs> and I, it's, it, it was the other bit I was gonna do, if not this one. And uh, it's it's brutal because some crowds <laughs> they're like. I don't know who Lyndon Johnson is. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Do you think it'd be funny if when you drink, they they make you pin the chip to your shirt and then a really disappointed general just rips it off? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it is so weird that they use chips because it's like literally this is a... This, this is, is an addiction. Set, yeah, this is, this, is, this is set up as like an economical resource. This is currency. So, but you never pay. Yeah. Is that intentional? Maybe you know that your drinking problem was too bad when you lost your sobriety chip. You're like, okay, I have. <laughs> or maybe they don't give you. You try to buy a beer with this one year chip. <laughs> hey, give, me... <laughs> give me a shot. I, what do they I... give you if you have a gambling addiction? Do they give you like a one day beer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like the definitely the the guy who started AA was like when he hit his rock bottom he was surrounded by poker chips <laughs> and he was like oh, I'll, I'll use these <laughs> oh, that's funny. all right anything else for Rob everybody no, that's great thank you guys all right in that case it's time for one of our people to show us their drawings of the it's jokes Marco. we just did. have you been drawing John Marco <laughs> Have you? No. <laughs> it's not Jim Marco. Uh, it's not Jim Marco. It's Who Leedy. is it? It's Leedy. <laughs> Leedy's gonna show us her drawing. I will. I just gotta be ho uh, ho host, co host, co host. I'm gonna co host you. Boom. This you bit where we improvise a Leedy song is so much more fun than the Ruth Bader Ginsburg bit. I agree. <laughs> I'm glad we got rid of that. Do we even do anything or we just go, this is our order today? Yeah, this oh, is yeah, the order. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that order. so much more. Yeah. It makes me so sad. I loved Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Was that Aww. just me? Is it just me and her against the world? I liked her originally, but then nothing really happened with it. It didn't grow Rob, and develop. Rob, did you like it? Because you would always come in with some I did like spin it. on it. Yeah. 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 It might have just been me that didn't like it. <laughs> I mean, I was... <laughs> I was mad about it. Mm, that's okay. That's okay. You know, we have Quick, to just let Marco, this go. Make a stance on Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Don't you don't know like anything about it. I don't know what it is. Yay or nay. Yay or nay, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> or a complex opinion we'll take, too. Mm -hmm. And you know what? We also started uh, getting in the habit of explaining it every episode. And I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> if you had picked a less, like, a less, a more obscure Supreme Court justice, <laughs> I think I'd be down. Yeah, okay. I, think Ru I, I think Ruth I is a little played out. There's a lot mm -hmm. of like, yeah. oh, Ruth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's right. He's right. Mm -hmm. That's so sad. Now right. we we did make Jared come up with that on the spot. <laughs> Just he like did like Ant Antonin Scosmopolitan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. First up, I have you ran the light. Yeah. <laughs> then I, I have. It. <laughs> Cute little animation, nice. love it. Then I have David. exclamation point because he told me to give the note at the end. So there it is. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Then I have an animation. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god you're incredible <laughs> you. that is <laughs> uh, wow I'm, I'm sorry funny. you have skippity dippity headaches <laughs> and rope. That's great. <laughs> then i have it feels like hot skewer through the eye <laughs> 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 It's very funny wording. <laughs> I really like how you drew Rob laughing there. He just looks yeah. so happy. Like <laughs> yeah. What a delight. That's, that's, He's like Santa in his youth. That's the same 
a kind of glee that I had when Rob was about to crash the car after describing <laughs> how another car almost crashed. <laughs> um, last but not least, I have an animation. Poof! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. oh my god! Oh my oh. god! Oh, That's wonderful. so good! Get out! Amazing! Oh. He just gets wow. one right so right. good! Oh, good! Oh, wonderful! I've done it oh, once again, god. <laughs> As soon as he said it, I was like, I'm gonna have fun! Wow! 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 wow. wow. That's amazing! amazing. Excellent work! Lady, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Lady Corbin. You can support me on Patreon, also Lady Corbin. And watch me on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Lady Art. Also, I'll be on tour with Steve for like three months uh, oh, after, in September, starting September. So, so check it out. Woo! All right, and, and Jay Marco, where can we yeah. find you? Uh, uh, I'm online everywhere at John Marco Cerezi. It's my name. And then uh, I have a podcast called The Downside with Joe Marcus Horacey, so check that out. Ah, what's it about? Yeah. It's it's like I have guests on and it, we just talk about all the negatives in life and you know find out what sucks about where they live and their family and their careers. And uh, it's it's a it's a fun, a very J- Jewish flavoring underneath mm-hmm. it all. And uh, uh, yeah, and I'll post on Instagram upcoming dates. I'm gonna be at the Looney Bin in Oklahoma City, Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle, Comics Mohegan Sun, a lot of cool stuff coming up. Sweet. All right. Thanks for coming on, man. You were great. Yeah. Thanks I love this. Here. I love this so much. This was great. Oh, I'm All so right. glad you enjoy yourself. This should be out. And in guess what? Outro goes here. Thanks so much for watching. Check back every Monday for new episodes, or you can listen wherever you enjoy podcasts. If you want to help support the show, tell your friends how much you like Is This Anything. Or get involved, like an episode, share, comment, subscribe. If you want more Is This Anything, you got to join our Patreon at patreon.com slash ITAPod. We have a ton of awesome, exclusive content on there, and you can join for as little as a dollar a month. Check out the links in the description, and hopefully we'll see you next week.